Hey guys, I always talk about the importance of shooting off a of field rest, you know, the rests we're actually gonna use out in the hunting environment. So today, I'm gonna go over my favorite rest. I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of each, and then I'm gonna do a little shooting test for you. Not necessarily to show you which one's best, but just to show you that you gain some things when you use a certain type of rest, and you lose other things. Guys, if you have no clue who I am, I don't blame you at all. My name's Cliff Gray. I started, owned, operated, and sold some of the largest outfitting businesses in North America. Everything that I say in these videos, guys, is just based on that experience. All I hope is that you guys get some value from them. If you like my stuff, guys, subscribe to the channel and go to my website, PursuitWithCliff.com and sign up for my newsletter there. All right, guys, let's get to the point. We're gonna go over five different rests today. We're gonna go over just shooting off a pack, which everybody loves and it's pretty convenient. We're gonna go over the tripod mounted hog saddle. We're gonna go over the detachable bipod. We're gonna go over using a set of trigger sticks. One of these little, oh, come on. We're gonna go off of our trekking poles, the little handy dandy quick sticks adapter. You can see that thing there that's mounted to my trekking poles. All right, guys, so let's go over these rests real quick and I'll show you all the pros of each one, okay? And I'll touch on some cons. All right, so first, a pack, right? So just your backpacking pack, your hunting pack, you know, either if you're on a backpack hunt, your bigger pack, but also your day pack. That can be used as a rest, particularly if it's got, you know, some soft clothing in there that's kind of pliable, you can get your rifle on there. Very handy. The main thing is it's convenient and you typically always have it with you, right? I'll give you one con, guys. One con with backpack is if you haven't practiced shooting off of them, you know, over the top, over the frame like this, the, one of the problems with them, if there's any vegetation at all, a lot of the times they're not gonna get you elevated enough to shoot over that vegetation. So that can be a problem. The best way to combat that, if it's a, if it's a pack with a nice sturdy internal frame or an external frame, is learn how to shoot over it this way, okay? You're not gonna be as accurate when you're shooting over it when it's flat, because it's not as sturdy, just not as comfortable to use, but practice both ways. Today I'm just gonna shoot over it this way. I think that's a more fair comparison, but just know that that's a con of the of using your backpack as a rest. The other tricky thing about backpacks, guys, is sometimes it depends on how much you have inside of them, okay? So if you're, if you're dragging a pack around, like you're on a backpack hunt, so you have a big, you know, high volume bag on your frame, and then you unload camp, and now you're day hunting with that pack, a lot of times when you go to use it a rest, you use it as a rest, um, it's not quite as good as you think because it's too flat, right? It's really not giving you much to, to, uh, to use as a rest. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you're practicing on these, you know, try to practice when it's a little bit more empty and then a little bit more full, just so you're used to both conditions. All right, guys, the hog saddle on a tripod, okay? These are awesome in terms of accuracy, and I think you're gonna see that when I test them. When you get a rifle in here, particularly, you know, I've got this one mounted uh, just directly on a tripod, but you can use a nice pan head in here where you can move the rifle around once, once, once it's hooked up. You're gonna be really accurate with these. They're very sturdy, right? Um, so that's the pro. The con is that it, you know, it is a little bulky item you've got to, you've got to keep, but not too bad. You know, this, this additional thing here, you know, in a time sensitive deal, it can be a little bit of a pain in the ass to pull your spotter off of your tripod, uh, that sort of thing. The other thing is you've got to attach this to the forearm of your rifle. And just so you guys know, generally I haven't seen this as a problem, um, but whenever you take these on and you crank them on the forearm of a rifle, you need to practice that before you're in the field because that might actually affect your point of aim. You know, you could have a floating barrel gun and now that you're putting pressure on that forearm, you're actually making contact with the barrel. So that can affect your accuracy and your point of aim. So make sure if you're gonna use one of these hog saddles that you keep that in mind. All right guys, trekking poles. A lot like the pack, you know, the, uh, the huge pro is that you don't have to carry another thing. You've got to rest right here with one of these, you know, quick sticks adapters. I'm, there might be some other solutions too, um, but they're nice in that regard. The other thing is you can, because your, your uh, trekking poles are adjustable, you can get up above vegetation. You can get a little elevation. You can shoot off them when you're sitting. Depending on your trekking poles, it might be hard for you to shoot off them when, when you're prone because you just you're, you have kind of a limit of how low you can get that. Like you can take this way down here, but then it's a little bit in, uh, uh, less convenient to use. So just keep that in mind when you're setting them up. You wanna put that adapter somewhere where you're pretty close to be able to shoot prone. I don't find these. These are not as sturdy as like the hog style 
saddle or even shooting off my pack in general, but super convenient and they give you some options in terms of getting elevation and uh, you know, there's, it's a multi-purpose thing. I got my trekking poles anyways, and this little adapter is nice. It actually even, it's even nice to have it on there just for storing my poles, right? They're always together. I'm not got one of them in the back of the truck and out looking for the other pole. I know they're just attached together, so that's nice. The third one I'll touch on, I'm a huge fan of these detachable bipods on your rifles. I, I've grown where I don't really like the ones that are, that are permanently attached to your rifle. And the reason is in order to get ones, that have enough elevation, like you can see these. I mean, you can shoot these, you can shoot, shoot these like from a, you know, Indian style position to get above vegetation easily, right? To have this type of bipod permanently attached to your rifle, it's just gonna be a massive pain in your ass. It's a lot of weight and just, and just another thing hanging off the end of your rifle. So if your rifle's going into scabbards, going into the back seat of a truck, all of that stuff, if you've got it permanently attached, it's a big pain in the butt. But now this, this solution solves that because I just have a pick rail on the forearm of my rifle and this, uh, this bipod is gonna go right on there. As you can see right here, clicks on. We're ready to rock, okay? So these are pretty handy. Um, I find them, uh, I find that I can get pretty good accuracy at them, but we'll see here when I test them. One of the negatives on this is that uh, they are expensive, right? This is a hatch bipod. I've been very happy with this. I know there's a bunch of other ones, but I have heard from almost everybody that's used different variations. The higher quality ones, you know, the ones that are kind of cost you like north of 200 bucks are really the ones that get. So that's kind of the con. The other thing is, you know, um, it's not going to be as accurate, a accurate as like the hog saddle uh, necessarily because it is, you know, it's a bipod, not a tripod. So there's, there's two points of contact. But we'll shoot off these. I'll show you. I love these. I've almost always got them in my pack. All right, guys, trigger sticks. I have a love-hate relationship with these things. To be honest with you, they're not great for mountain hunts. There's two things about them. They're pretty bulky and heavy, right? And the other thing is you can probably hear this. They have a tendency to clack. You can hear that? And that drives me crazy, that clacking between the poles. So that's the big con on them. You know, on the positive side of things, till you get used to them, uh, they're a little wonky, but honestly, the functionality of them is pretty cool. So you can see how high I can get them to shoot over vegetation, that's awesome. But I can actually twist this and get it where I can shoot. I can shoot almost prone off of them, really. I mean, I, I have shot prone off of them. It works, you can see you get those legs way out and they get low. And then they're handy, right? Because you can just adjust with your trigger, which is nice, right? So they're, they're pretty easily deployable and I like them in that regard. But like I mentioned, they're just a little bulky and that noise drives me crazy. Uh, the other thing, guys, is they're kind of they're single use. Um, you know, they, you can't really use them as a trekking pole. Uh, they, they don't, they're not that great. I mean, I technically you can use them as kind of a walking stick, but they're not a great alternative to a normal trekking pole. Um, and the other thing is guys ask me, can you glass off of them? Can you use them as a tripod? It's actually pretty tough because there's kind of a built in flex here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a built in kind of cushion and how the mechanism works. And when you're glassing, that doesn't really give you the stability that you're looking for, all right? So they're not perfect for that. You know, are they an okay solution? Sure, and one awesome advantage, like when I've been hunting odd at or something, you know, in mesquite or high brush or whatever, you can actually use these, you can extend them high enough where you can just casually set a pair of binoculars on them like this just for stability and even standing where you have to look over high vegetation, they're a good rest, right? And I'll show you guys that real quick. So guys, hopefully you can see me here. I can, I can be walking, I can extend my trigger sticks and then standing I can, I can glass with them. And that's a pretty cool uh, advantage of these things. I would say these things are a great option for a rest, you know, on vehicle based hunts or stuff where you're not trekking a long distance, right? They're not going to be the best rest for a backpack mountain hunt or something like that, but they have their place. And I think you'll see that you can shoot pretty accurate off of them. All right, guys, I'm going to throw my hat on because the sun's blazing out here. I got my little sun hat here. And by the way, you guys that have been talking shit about my hats in these videos, I actually find your comments kind of funny. I got to read you guys one because I find it so hilarious. Um, and I, I suppose the guy was being mean and so I shouldn't encourage it, uh, but it was still, it was still pretty funny. So this is Brian's comment on my hat, okay, in the other videos. And I think he's referring to my cowboy hat. He says, love the hat, 
My sister wears the exact same one. I really didn't know they made those in men's sizes. Let's go ahead and shoot off these rests and see how we do. All right guys, so how this is gonna go down, I'm gonna throw a couple warm up shots uh, downfield here to just uh, get us on target. And then I'm gonna go through each rest and I'm gonna shoot three rounds off each rest. And I will, uh, in between the uh, each rest, I will let my gun cool down. You know, I'm shooting one of these Ruger Predator rifles. It doesn't have a real expensive barrel on it or anything, so the barrel will, will get hot, particularly if it's 80 degrees today. So I'll cut that out, but I will let the gun rest in between sets and we'll, uh, we'll see how we do. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna try is we're gonna try the pack rest, okay? All right, so that was the pack. All right guys, now we're gonna shoot off the trekking poles with the quick sticks adapter. Just in general, it's not as steady because I'm not shooting prone, so you have to, you have to take that into account, but that's Usually how you're going to use these sticks. I found it relatively difficult to shoot prone off of them. Alright guys, so that was the quick sticks. I actually shot pretty well. I'm a little surprised at how tight the group was. It's pretty amazing, but they are pretty solid. And kind of a good mix, right? A convenience and the fact that they, uh, they're a solid rest. All right guys, now we're gonna shoot off the hog saddle on the tripod. Again, here guys, we're gonna shoot sitting. That's probably more realistic for when you're shooting off this type of rest. So like I said, I don't like to like hammer on the, the hog saddle in terms of getting it crazy tight. I don't want it to affect the physics of the barrel. As you can see, there's a little setup. All right, so that's the hog saddle. Gonna go ahead and put on our hatch bipod. All right, guys, back to pr shooting prone. All right, so you can see the bipod's pretty darn accurate, but keep in mind that I am shooting prone, so there's a little little difference there. And honestly, a lot of time you're gonna be shooting prone off a bipod. That's one of the huge advantages of these uh, detachable ones. You can actually shoot sitting, you can shoot prone. It's very easy to vary that. Whereas on some of those other rests, as you saw, it's not all that easy to do it. All right, guys, so one of the advantages of these trigger sticks is you can shoot from a lot of different, different positions but I find the most comfortable way to shoot off of them is sitting, kind of Indian style. That's one thing about them, as you adjust them, it's nice, you could just use that trigger uh, setup right here, but one of the problems is the feet will kind of toe out on you, so you have, to, you have to be cognizant of that. The adjustment's nice, but you, it lacks a little sturdiness. All right, guys. So that kind of—that's the last—the uh, last one to test went pretty well. Uh, we'll get the targets and check them out and see what we uh, what we can say about the different uh, rests. Just to show you guys the grouping up close and personal. That's the trigger sticks. That's the bipod. 
That's the trekking poles with the quick sticks adapter. This is the pack. That's the hog saddle. All right, guys, so you saw the grouping. Just so you know, uh, I was shooting um, at these targets at you know roughly 150, 160 yards. So it's not like these were far shots. Um, I wanted to make sure that I could I could group with the different rests. But having said that, uh, you've seen the groups, uh, but I want you to know that I don't think that uh, shows the complete story. So while it's fresh in my mind, I wanna jump through all five uh, rests real quick and just give you my, my quick uh, opinion on how I felt while I was shooting, okay? So the trigger sticks, guys, essentially, um, um, you know, it's just a three round group, so who knows, but you got two rounds that are touching each other uh, And then you've got one kind of flyer there. That's an inch and a half out um, I actually think it grouped better than it felt uh, those sticks are nice They give you a lot of flexibility up and down, but that bounce to them. I don't particularly like that, right? I think it's by design, but I find it a little fidgety So I didn't feel real solid, but you can see the results are the result the bipod guys it grouped basically half MOA um, and to be honest, that uh, detachable bipod, it's just really solid. Those are the results I, I expected. And when you pull through the trigger and you just watch the target uh, with that, with that uh, muzzle brake, I get very uh, little uh, muzzle flip on my 308. I mean, I can just see it group in there. That's, that, that hatch bipod, that doesn't surprise me at all uh, based on how it felt. On the trekking poles with the quick sticks, uh, with this quick sticks uh, ad ad adapter, and that's S-T-I-X, I think they spell it. Um, and I'm not affiliated with them, and I think I may even paid full price for those. Um, but having said that, I will say they actually pleasantly surprised me. Um, I haven't shot a lot uh, off of them in the field, to be honest with you. But I was surprised, uh, one, uh, how they grouped. I mean, they grouped, you know, basically, you know, an uh, inch and a quarter. Um, and uh, I, uh, I felt really good shooting off of them though. Like if you, if you look back at the, at the footage, I actually didn't have to hold the forearm of the rifle. Uh, I could just frame up inside my knees and I could just put those in that, uh, in that adapter and they actually worked real, real, real well. So those actually impressed me, uh, not only my feel when shooting them, but how they grouped. Um, the pack guys, it, this, this I think is an observation that uh, you guys should all look at because I think we, we think we're more accurate on our pack than we actually are because this is a prone group and it was really probably close to two you know two inches um and it was elevation up and down um so it's starting to spread out and there's something about it. i don't know what it is um i think there's just a lot of different variables that are moving when you set up on a pack it's never the same um so as you shoot you're adjusting and that just comes out uh in your in your results but it feels really solid i think that's something we all got to watch for and watch for that when you're practicing and then the hog saddle guys the hog saddle um i'll be honest with you that thing feels super solid and i think I, it, you know, it grouped an uh, inch and a half. I actually think that if I was more patient with it in the setup and getting it set up perfectly, I think it would have grouped more like the bipods, if not better, okay? So I just want to throw that out there. I actually think that this this grouping was not because of the mechanism. It was because my frustrating with, with moving around and adjusting it. You know, I think if I went back and did it again and I put it on a nice pan head, I think I'd be more uh, flexible. Um, so what I'll say about those hog saddle type, type of setups is they're super accurate and they're super solid guys. Um, it's just that that setup is annoying, okay? And I, and I think in the field, you're gonna have the same feeling. It's, it's annoying to have that setup. So guys, I hope that gives you a feel for everything. If you guys have any comments on rests that you've used and you found that are super useful, super flexible and accurate, throw it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. But anyways, guys, I hope this is all useful to you and I hope it helps you out there in the field this fall. Thanks guys.